Hello and welcome to another episode of Rubber Minds Plus. My name is Eboa Desmond. And today I'm joined by an amazing personality. He's a public affairs analyst. And um, we're doing a roundup of some of the stories that caught our eyes um, in the news during the week. Um, hi, Mr. Timmy Dyer Hi, Desmond. Um, there's a new change, there's a slight change in your name, Timmy Dyer Dyer Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. so um, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you very much. So it's a pleasure to be here. Fantastic. So um, there's been a lot of um, happenings in the news. A lot of conversations has been up yeah. in the news, both on Twitter and um, both on traditional media and all of that. But then what are the three stories that caught your attention? Um, I, I believe one of the stories that would definitely catch your attention is the EFCC's um, boss's <laughs> statement. But then, what are some of the stories that caught your attention? Um, yeah, that one is one of it, definitely. And um, the story that broke, uh, uh, Premier Dance were the first to break the story. It was an exclusive the story on um, the National Security Advisor accusing mm. the Chief of Staff to the President of unwarranted medicine interference and that he blamed him that that um, singular action not really singular anyways i mean there were um, a number of occasions he said this had happened that that had um, led to some form of uh, slack on the part of the armed forces in the fight against insurgency that's mm -hmm. boko haram and, War and all of yeah. that that's one um, there's also the story of um, um, emir of kano um, Emir Mohammed Sanusi II, who, um, in his characteristic manner, um, talked about the issue of poverty, poverty in the in north, north, and that 87 percent of um, Nigeria's poverty is accounted for by the north. It, then the third story was the one about um, the yes, yes, yes. EFCC one, like you mentioned. So, I mean, those, those really are three stories. That so let's um, break each of the stories um, into tiny bits, um, into understandable bits. So um, how, how true is the point raised by the Emir of Kano? Well, um, it's not news. That what the Emir of Kano has said is not news. Is there truth in it? Yeah, of course. It's, like I said, that's why I said it's not news. Everybody does know that, I mean, the highest um, concentration of poor people in this country. So it's not news that um, the um, highest concentration of... Well, are there numbers to back it up? Like, a research has been done that proves that. Not by, like, standards, things we see. Oh, we see these people... No, there, there are, actually. I Bats. cannot... Yes, there Bats are. Bats numbers. Yes, there are, but okay. I cannot um, currently point to any um, figure. I mean, to be safe, I would not want to quote what's wrong. Mm -hmm. But I, I do know that... I mean, over time, there's been data to back the fact that when we look at the poor states in the country, that most of them uh, come from the part state. of the northern um, region, as it were. And even what uh, Mia Samusi said um, supports that. He said that nine states in the north in particular um, account for majority of the poor people in the country, and that 87 percent of um, Nigeria's poor people are residing in the north. The thing is, it's just because we have um, a bold ruler, I would use the word ruler, mm. or a bold monarch as um, Emir Sanusi. Otherwise, this is something that they not knows, but I mean, it would just appear like everybody is shying um, away from, shying away from it. The they're truth. afraid to say it, truth. or they are, for whatsoever reason, they decide not to talk about it. But we do know, everyone knows, I would believe, that um, the North is the poorest region. And what's fundamental about what um, I mean, as Anusi has said, it's not just the poverty per se, but it was like challenging the northern elites. The gathering, which was um, Governor of Kaduna's 60th birthday, Nasser mm. Erufai, he challenged the northern elites that, I mean, we, go, we have to do something about this whole thing that, with, with the way it's going, if you take out the quota system, I'm sure you know the quota system where um, the, uh, a system that was introduced by the constitution some years ago, mm -hmm. introduced into the constitution to ensure that um, people who are a bit disadvantaged okay, yeah. in terms of education, you are able to bring them at par with um, those other parts of the country where they are, uh, they have the educational advantage. advantage. So it reflects in the number of students that are admitted into unity schools across the country, the number of students 
or the cut off mark that you need to get into a um, unity school and so many other areas. So when you look at all of these things, MS is saying this has been going on for years. If we take this out, we are going to be at danger. Uh, we're going to be in a dangerous position. Mm. So what are we doing ahead of this disenchantment that is going on currently? Mm -hmm. And with the current level of um, disenchantment, people talking about amotekun, people talking about um, um, secession, people talking about restructuring. All of this goes to show that people are getting um, tired of this imbalance in the system and. All of it points to the fact that if you take the quota system out, the not will be in a very terrible um, position. I mean, talking, talking about educationally, society can move I like, I like the fact that you talked about um, it challenging, um, um, his statement challenging the, what, it, what is in the North. And yeah. um, so do you think of what impact would, that state, would his statement be? Of course, it will make tremendous impact because um, the people we were speaking with or speaking to, mm -hmm. uh, these people leader. were stakeholders, they are mm -hmm. leaders, they are policy uh, makers, mm -hmm. they are the ones who are the art of driving change in the northern um, states or the northern um, region. So I, I wonder who would be the best person to speak to um, if you don't talk to governors, if you are not talking to um, speakers of House of uh, assembly legislators from even at the federal level. So, I mean, it was the right audience. I know a lot of people have criticized it, it's, I mean, making statements like they are statements that are befitting for uh, a particular place and all of that. But the truth is that one of the major issues we have in this country is we shy away from saying things as it should. Mm. And I mean, that's, uh, it deserves to be commended. All right. Uh